All right, guys, so before we start our back-end coding, we need to get our environment set up. Now, I realize that everyone is different. Everyone uses different editors and, and terminals and so on, and that's fine, but I'm just going to show you what I'll be working with. Now, of course, you will need Node.js installed, so make sure you have that. Just go to Node.js.org. Go ahead and download the latest version and get that installed. I already have it installed. I'm not going to go through that. Uh, I will be using VS Code as my text editor and I'll be using a couple extensions. I do have it already installed, but I don't have the extensions or settings set up, so we're going to go through that together. And then I'm also using Git Bash because I am using Windows and I don't want to use the standard Windows command line. So Git Bash gives us a Bash terminal to work with. It also gives us the Git version control system so that we can push to Heroku later on. All right. Now, if you're on Linux or Mac, you already have a Bash based terminal, so you don't need this. But if you do want to push to Heroku or push to GitHub, then you will need the Git version control system. All right, if you're on Mac, you can either use this or you can install it with Homebrew, I believe. And if you're on Linux, you can, of course, use your package manager. All right, so let's jump into VS Code. And this is basically just a pretty much a new install. There's nothing here, so we're going to get this set up. We're going to first go to our settings. So preferences, settings, or control comma, or command comma. And you don't have to do everything I'm doing here. Uh, for instance, I'm going to change the editor font size. So I'm going to say copy to settings. It'll bring it over here to our custom config. And I'm going to change it to 26 and save it. Control S. And that will kick in right away. Uh, I'm also going to set the tab size from 4 to 2. So it's not as spread out. But again, that's just preference. And let's also do word wrap. I'm going to it's it's off by default and I want to turn it on. OK, uh, let's see what else we want. The terminal font size, or at least I want the terminal font size to be bigger. By default, it's 14. I'm going to also change that to 26. Oops. All right. Now we're going to be using React on the front end, which uses JSX to display our markup. And I want to use Emmet, which allows us to use abbreviations to quickly create divs with classes and stuff like that. So to get that to work, there's a couple things we need to add here. So if I search for uh, Emmet, I want to add in this included languages. So we'll say copy to settings. And inside here, in this included languages, uh, I'm going to say JavaScript and set this to JavaScript React. And with different versions of VS Code, that what you have to do for, for Emmet to work with JSX, it, it's changed. Um, this is just this is what has worked for me in the latest version. So that and we also um, we also want the syntax profiles, which is right here. We're going to copy that over as well. If you get that little pop up, just click save and retry. So in here, in the syntax profiles, we want JavaScript and set that to JSX. Okay, and that, yeah, that should do it. All right, and then the last thing I'm going to do for now is my terminal, my integrated terminal with VS Code. By default, it uses PowerShell, and I don't want to use PowerShell. I want to use Git Bash. So this right here, terminal integrated shell windows, we're going to copy that over. And we need to change this path to Git Bash. And remember, if you're on Mac or Linux, you, you don't have to do this. Um, so let's see, I forget the path. Let me just search for... Uh, I'm going to search for VS Code Integrated Terminal. It's the first link here. And right here, it shows us what to put in there if you want to use Git Bash, which is this here. Okay, so we'll replace this PowerShell path and save, and there we go. So that should be it for the settings. For now, I'm going to close that up and I'm going to open my terminal. You can either go to view integrated terminal 
or you can do uh, control or command back tick and that should toggle it and if you still see if you're on Windows and you still see PowerShell just go ahead and click the plus and open a new terminal and it should it should be a bash terminal all right so now that that's done let's take a look at some extensions so I'm gonna click on this icon here and the first one I'm going to install is called ES7 it'll, it'll come up here ES7 react redux graphql react native snippets okay so it gives us a whole bunch of snippets for all these different uh, technologies so if we want like a react component let me see uh, if we want a react component we can just do RCC tab and it'll create a class based component if we wanted a functional component we could do RFC and so on so this is a really handy extension so we're going to install that and reload alright uh, next thing I'm going to install is the bracket colorizer bracket pair colorizer which does just that if you have like nested functions or if statements or whatever it'll it'll um, it'll color pairs of brackets which is really helpful so I'm going to install that again you don't have to but I just want to go through what I'm what I'm installing I'm also going, going to install prettier which is a code formatter so basically we can make it so that it it formats our code on save so if 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 our arrow functions aren't aligned properly or something like that it'll actually uh, fix it when we save so that's really helpful and if you're following along it's really helpful because it'll make our code match so I'm gonna just reload and let's see uh, I'm also gonna install live server which has nothing to do with our application but when we create the bootstrap theme which will be optional you don't have to go through that lesson or that section if you don't want you can skip it and just have the theme uh, or download the theme but if you want to develop it I'd suggest using live server which will just serve the HTML pages so I'm gonna get that installed and then the last thing I want is the node.js modules IntelliSense okay so this will give us import statements and things like that all right so those are the extensions that I'll be using of course if you have other ones that you want to use that's fine as well oh, one thing that I do want to add into the um, the configuration or the settings is the the functionality where it actually where prettier will save on or format on save so we want to look for let's see I think it's format on save right here so you can see it's set to false I'm gonna just set it to true okay and we'll save that and we should be all set so now that our environments all set in the next video we're gonna jump in and we're going to start to create our back-end API with node and express